It's the early 1960s, the height of the Cold War. I'm in the Navy assigned to a nuclear missile submarine. We regularly deploy off the coast of Russia just in case they decide to start World War III. We're part of a strategic deterrent force. In the event of a missile attack on the United States, we will retaliate by firing our missiles in a brilliantly cynical plan called Mutually Assured Destruction or MAN. We're not waiting for orders to end the world as we know it. I'm usually hanging out at the bar at the Crown Hotel in Dunoon. It's a resort town in the banks of Holy Loch in Scotland, known mainly for the annual Highland Games, where tall, muscular Scotsmen wearing traditional kilts gather to hurl telephone pole-sized logs great distances. Needless to say, lots of single Scottish school teachers traditionally spend their summers here looking for husbands, a summer fling, or maybe just a peek under those manly kilts. We're the first American servicemen stationed in Scotland since World War II, and we're welcomed like royalty by everybody, especially the young women. I'm in daily competition with my shipmates for the attention of the local girls, but I'm also heavily involved in an unofficial competition for the title of Town Drunk, for which I seem to possess an uncanny natural aptitude. One night I decided to take the ferry to Gurick about an hour up the lock from the noon. I'm working on a good drunk at the first bar I find, and somehow I hook up with Rosie McGee. Rosie's in her late 20s, good looking in a hard kind of way that I like. She looks like she's been around the block a few times. Very petite, with sharp, penetrating eyes. She laughs easily and really loud, and has that same sick, cynical sense of humor as me. This is going to be a match made in hell. We become the drinking, partying, always too loud attraction wherever we go. Everybody knows and likes Rosie. I have no idea where she lives and I never even think to ask. Lots of nights we're drinking and partying very late and I missed the last ferry back to the noon. Rosie proves to be really resourceful. At the rail yard, she has a friend who lets us sleep on park trains for the night. On summer nights, another friend of Rosie lets us stay in a cemetery where we make love and sleep on cool marble grave covers. Once a Bobby rides by on his bicycle while Rosie's riding me and he just says, Hi, Rosie. She smiles and rides on. She yells back, Hey, Fergus, how's the baby? At that time, I'm more concerned with her wool underpants rubbing hard against my inner thighs and burning like hell. You know, lots of working class women and factory girls in Scotland can only afford wool underwear because wool's cheap. The country is full of sheep. Rosie wears wool knickers even in summer, and I'm still carrying a few burn scars from them damn knickers. Picture this now. It's a beautiful Sunday sum summer afternoon. We've been fucking and drinking in the cemetery all night, and now we're strolling along the promenade heading out of town. My arms draped over Rosie's shoulder, her arms around my waist, her hair is up in a beehive, and she's wearing my favorite white polka dot mini dress and high platforms. And she's got great legs. We're laughing and kissing and pulling long swaddles from a bottle of scotch. The heather on the side of the hills is shooting glimmering purple starbursts through the morning mist. It's absolutely beautiful. Life is good. And we're feeling really good. We stop at one of those photo booths in the arcade. You know, where you put a couple of shillings in, you pull the curtain, and you pose for pictures. Well, we finish off the bottle first put a couple of coins in the machine and take two rounds of pictures. We're feeling kind of frisky and we sneak in a couple of pretty intimate poses in the second set. While we're waiting for the pictures to come out of the machine, we both nod off. When we finally wake up, God knows how much later, we're half undressed and Rosie's beehive is looking like the leaning tower of Pisa. We grab the pictures from the machine and we're looking at them first set of pictures, we're hugging and smiling and looking happy. But by the last picture in the second set, how the hell did we get in that position in this booth? What the fuck? Rosie, she looks really old. 
Her breasts are all saggy and wrinkled, and I look drunk and really stupid. My face is so full of zits, I look like I took a load of buckshot. We need to fix this fast. I, I tear up the pictures, Rosie grabs my hand, and we head for the bar at the Crown Hotel, where we can drink until we look beautiful in that mirror behind the bar. Mariner himself. <laughs> 